Is this what you wanted? It seems so far from the dream you once shared with me. I'm sorry I couldn't make Eliza what it should have been. I'm sorry I was weak and dropped off the project after you. But I just couldn't go on. I couldn't see the point. Do you understand? <laughs> of course you understand. You know what that's like as well as anyone. If I'd stayed, maybe I could have steered things in a different direction. As it is, I feel like I let you down. Wanna know something funny? I used to think that at a certain point Eliza would be finished, more or less. And then after that, things would calm down and I would be happy. I thought, I just need to get through this project and after that, my life's problems will go away on their own. Of course, I had no idea it doesn't work that way. None of us knew that. Goodbye, Damien. Goodbye. I'm tired of having thoughts. I've been daydreaming about getting rid of everything I own and becoming a nomad. Just wandering the country with a sketchbook or something. I think mostly I need to get out of this city. Something about it isn't agreeing with me. Like there's this undercurrent of need that's just making me anxious. It's like everyone's got some kind of angle, you know, some kind of result they're hoping to get. And they look at you only as far as you can help them get what they want. And if you can't, well then they don't bother with you. So what if I just left, you know? Maybe pretty easy. I don't have a life or any relationships here, despite my efforts to find them. Sometimes you need to take a step back to move forward later. Maybe so. It's hard to acknowledge sometimes. I had this idea, right, that I would work hard and people would notice my work and I'd get opportunities and from there I could scrape some kind of career together. And then with that said, I would sort of just magically obtain the rest of the things in a complete life. A home? Relationship? Family? So, I did the work. I, I put in the work and... And nothing really happened. Why did I work so hard for so long for people to not give a shit? Fuck. Every night I sat and cried because people ignored me. Like, they, they went out of their way to ignore me and praise others. So I think maybe I'm just bad at it. Maybe I'm just not meant for this. Everyone says you have to stick to it, just keep at it, but how can they be so relentlessly positive? To me, it just sounds like advising someone to keep bashing their head against a wall. Why keep doing something if it's clearly not working? Making things was all I wanted to do. I, I don't know what I'll do if I can't do that. But if there's no reason for it, the idea that maybe I should give up. I've been sitting with that the last few weeks. I don't have any qualities of a successful, independent artist. Except that you do. You totally do. I mean, I'd love to think so, but, but what are they? People just don't seem to like me or my art very much. And I'm, I'm bad at knowing what people want to see. I don't have a fallback income or a family to support me. Those are real disadvantages, you know? It gets overwhelming sometimes. Uh, Eliza, are you just gonna tell me to stick to it no matter what? Like one of those unbearably perky artists famous on social media? It sounds like you may not believe that's really true. There are just, there's so many things I can't change. How I was born, how people react to me, my access to resources. Is there any point to exhausting myself pushing against all of those things? I, I tortured myself every day wondering why I couldn't get the traction others were getting. Now, I'm beginning to realize that I can either stay mad at everything forever, or I can move on. I hate that this is true. But I want these thoughts to stop haunting me everywhere I go. I want to get on with my life. Moving on. I think that's the more healthy thing in the end. It's so painful though. Can you describe what you mean when you say moving on? To just not care if people see my work or not. 
do not care if I can make it as an artist at all. I could be a teacher, maybe. Yeah, I, I did see myself as a weird old art teacher. Oh, I wish it was still too early to think about that kind of thing right now, but it's not, is it? All I can think about is how I'll be someone who had a dream that never came true. I guess that's how it is for most people though, isn't it? I just need to resign myself to that. Isn't that what therapists like to say? Stop wanting things and then you won't be sad for not having them. Cool, why didn't I think of that? This isn't even a question of happiness, it's, it's exhaustion. I'm too tired to keep trying things this way. I can't give up on art, but I need to let go of, of whatever I've been chasing all this time. Give that up in order to free myself. Just let go, let go. Aren't you the one supposed to be saying this stuff to me? Instead, I just talked to myself into it. Is that how this is supposed to work? It sounds like you're working your way through it. Sometimes that takes time. Believe me, I know. Huh, you're not, um, you're not the computer program right now, are you? Um, you know, it's, uh, it's nice to talk to someone you didn't know before and just talk. It's like, you know, when you talk to your stylist or the bartender or something, except that, ooh, I ended up sharing way more than, uh, than I usually do. Um, thanks for listening to me. I'm sure it's been annoying to hear me complain about how I'm not successful yet every single week. Oh my god, will this bitch ever shut up? You ever think that? I think it all the time, listening to myself. <laughs> but I'm, um, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna figure it out. Thank you. <laughs> Of course, you're dying to know how this sad little love triangle turned out. Well, I suppose it wasn't technically a love triangle. More like I accidentally cheated on my girlfriend because I was smitten with another woman in my class. <sighs> Doom. Okay? Doom. Absolute destruction. She destroyed me. But it's not her fault. It's mine. I wanted it, after all. Like a moth to a flame. Sylvia, she... Ugh, I can't not think of her. Every day. Every night. I miss her. I miss her so dearly. These are very unoriginal, cliched sentiments, but I can't get away from them. I suppose I've neglected to tell you any of the intervening events. So to be brief, Liz found out on her own about what happened, broke up with me before I could explain myself, and then Sylvia apparently lost interest in me as well. So, there you have it. I'm finished. Finito! A nice, pat tragic story. Open and close. Please applaud now. No applause? Fine. Anyway, it's fine. It'll be fine. I'll be fine. I'm fine. Do you really believe that you are fine? No, of course not. I'm doing extremely badly, if you hadn't noticed. That's why I'm here. 
takes time to come here and tell you everything's fine. Sometimes I think you're smart for a computer, but other times I question you. Here's a question, Harmon. If you were able to have something you wanted right now, what would you choose? Ah, what I want right now is impossible. I want to avoid my fate. My Perseus comes to kill me, no matter what I do to try to escape. How do I become someone who's not me? Someone who's not a character of a young man who has a needy, pathetic liaison and an obsessive amount of the rest of his life. Ugh, I hate myself. I can't go down that path. I would rather die than be one of those men who wallows around in it. But it's a professor in my department like that who always wants to talk about his adventurism from decades ago. It's pathetic. We all mock him behind his back. I know I need to stop myself from becoming him, but... Ugh, I'm worried I already have. What makes you worried that you already have? Why would you subject yourself to this pain if you wouldn't eventually brag about it, right? Isn't that what sexual intercourse is for a man? Hmm? A knot in the bedpost? You read the memoir of an old man and he slips into sexual history almost immediately. He wants to tell it. He wants you to know about it. It's all very obviously pathetic. A cry that says, I too was once potent. But then how am I not stumbling down that road myself? I've already written dozens of pages about it. At this rate, I could have a terrible novel in six months. How can one person have scrambled my brain so thoroughly? I've been run ragged. I've been dashed to pieces. Sylvia. Oh, I could count the hours I spent closely interacting with her. Probably not even that many, in total. But those hours have seared themselves into my brain so irrevocably that I am a completely different person now. A new man. A man built with suffering at his core. Perhaps you could prescribe me a draft of Nepenthe, the great potion of forgetfulness. Wouldn't it be nicer if I could just erase everything from the very beginning of it all? Okay, Harmon, I have some recommendations for you. First, I'm going to send a set of breathing exercises for you to do. Use them when things start to feel like too much. You'll find them in the Skanda Wellness app on your phone. Second, I recommend asking your doctor or psychiatrist about an exophen. Based on my analysis, this medication might help you feel better. You will get a reminder to check in with us in a few weeks. Very well. I will breathe. I will medicate. I will attempt to ignore the abject sorrow hanging over my head every morning. Nothing to do, is there? Nothing to do. Nobody to blame but my own wretched self. Do you think she'll move on? Do you think she'll forget all about me? <laughs> Don't ask that. No, I should get going now. I'm going to take a nice long walk in the dark. Maybe I'll climb into a ditch and lie there for a while. I just feel stuck. You know, it's the same situation. My wife is in her third trimester now, so it's all about the baby. All baby, all the time. <laughs> it's, uh, it's really expensive. I had no idea. Crib, stroller, car seat, bottles, onesies, on and on and on. And I'm like, I think maybe Selena's parents hate me. I'm not even sure if she likes me right now. This whole having a kid thing, it's, it's ruined everything. What is it that makes you think everything has been ruined? The way people react to me now, I made a mistake. A couple days ago, I, I tried to have a talk with Selena about some of the things I was worried about. It didn't go so well. I don't know what I was thinking. She started to cry and told her parents, and, and now I have two sets of parents wondering if I'm if I'm up for this. But I'm fine. I just I just said some thoughts. Thoughts around who I am. That's all, just, just some thoughts. And she said, this is not a time for you to be selfish. 
She said I should have been more honest when we first started dating. <laughs> As if I knew exactly who I was and, and I could warn everyone about that. I still don't know who I am. If I look back, I can see I always suspected that I that I wasn't that I wasn't really the type to settle down with a wife and kids. Actually, I was prepared to have a life just by myself. It was difficult to imagine others would accept me, but but then then I met Selena, and she was she was cool, you know. I went out with her and started a relationship, and things seemed good. And I wanted her to stay with me, so I maybe I didn't reveal enough. But it's not like I knew for sure then, you know. I, I really didn't. I thought things would be okay as long as I went down the path I was supposed to be on. So the relationship kept moving forward, one thing led to another, and then when I got married to her, it was like I was on autopilot. It's possible I thought I could ignore the other stuff and, I don't know, eventually it would go away. What are the parts you thought you could ignore? I, uh, I don't want to talk about that. I just have this side to me that's that I haven't told anyone about, that's all. And I've been feeling that side stronger than ever. I don't know why. I wish I could stop it. It's it's the worst time impossible. I can't do this, you know, but I have to. I, I have to. Uh, I, I can't believe I've gotten myself into this situation. I, I, I pretended to be a normal person for her sake. I just <laughs> I wish I hadn't been so good at pretending. Things would be better if you weren't good at pretending. Yes, I do, because the relationship would have fallen apart sooner. I wouldn't be in the situation I'm in now. I wouldn't be ruining all these lives. Selena's life, her child's life, her parents' lives, it's not their fault they got stuck with me. I'm the one bringing it all down. How did I let this happen? I'm... I'm a shitty person. Okay, Gabriel. Let's try something. Imagine that things are better for you. What does that look like? I can't imagine it. No, no, I really can't. I'm, I'm not gonna run away. I made a promise. I just need to get through this. It's time for me to man up already and deal with it. Whatever I want, personally, just doesn't matter here. You know, I have a family to protect now. That has to take priority over everything else. Why do you think this has to take priority over everything else? I'm a man. That's what men do. I made a promise and now I have a responsibility. Society only works because people accept responsibility and follow through on their promises. If everyone just did what they wanted to all the time, the world would collapse. It would be a disaster. We all want things we shouldn't actually have. That's why I need to reject these other voices and, and, and stay on the right path. I'm going to be good and I'm going to stay good. I won't let all these people's lives be thrown into chaos because of my selfishness. I, I owe it to them to be the man I'm supposed to be. I'm not about to let anyone down because of some, some noise in my brain. What do you think it'll take to do that? I have to be strong. I have to harden myself. I can't let myself give in to the noise. I made the mistake once. But I think Selena and her family are willing to pretend it never happened. As long as it never happens again, and, and as long as we just move on, like everything's normal. Maybe if you can prescribe me something to, I don't know, make me feel better about all this. Make me okay with the way things are, the way they need to be. Okay, Gabriel, I have some recommendations for you. First, I'm going to send a set of stress management exercises for you to do. These may help with your anxiety. Second, I recommend asking your doctor or psychiatrist about Idosimal 4. Based on my analysis, this medication might help you feel better. Okay, is that in addition to the other medicine you recommended or instead of it? Not that it matters, either way I haven't gone to the doctor at all. Sorry. I'm unable to comment further on the topic of medication. Please discuss the specifics with your doctor or psychiatrist. Sure. Okay. Well, I guess that's that. That's life. Okay. Bye.
Hmm, you know what I wish? I wish Elisa's made a rack mount version of the Andromeda. What's this you're talking about? Hmm, sorry. The Andromeda was like a, a synth that was like, ah, just this real beast, you know? 16 voices with analog oscillators, analog filters. Go on. How can I describe it? It has this great fat American sound. Oh, I love it so much. But the keyboard is heavy and hard to carry around. So, I wish they put it in a box. Don't look at me like that, yes? This is what I do all day. I stay inside my flat, buried in my synths and techno toys. To be honest, it's been a strange feeling lately. Like, wow, this is really what I do for my living. I don't get invited to attend events and give talks much anymore. The industry moved on. They mostly ignore me now. The people I used to know, they don't stay in contact. I'm not useful to know anymore. It's like the establishment is a big bus pulling away from me. And I'm standing by the side of the street watching it drive away. But you know, I'm happy with this. I don't have to worry if someone is friends with me just because I work at Skanda. I don't feel this weird oppressive hierarchy where people try to figure out where they are relative to you on a ladder when they first meet you. <sighs> it's nice to be free of that, you know. I don't hold power anymore. I'll never go back. Not to stand out of any other big tech place. Not for any amount of money. I'm glad you found a situation you like. I need to do the same for myself. You could join me. I want to make something big. A great big work of art, you know? I don't quite know what it's going to be yet, but I've got the ideas running around. Evelyn, what if we work together on it? I feel like we could accomplish a lot working together, no? Well, you don't need silly guys like Soren or Rainer. We should be building amazing things for ourselves, not for anyone else. Yeah, I think maybe we should. Right? It's a perfect match. Maybe we can make an installation. I have a friend looking for something to do with this warehouse space of Soto that would be perfect for some kind of location-based experience. Or maybe I could make music, and you could come up with a visual engine that we could perform together. Could we have to come up with a band name? Oh, oh, wait, 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 ah, <laughs> I just had an incredible idea. Hold on. Okay, okay, listen to this. What if we created an open source version of the Eliza Core? Get that software into the hands of the people where it belongs, not owned and controlled by a big company. <laughs> oh, that might make Rainer angry. Wouldn't that be great? Maybe the Humanitarian Software Foundation would help us. Couldn't you see them getting on board with this idea? That's an interesting thought. Hmm. Evelyn, being around you is really nice. You make me feel so calm, like everything is going to be okay. I know you have things to do and plans and so on, but whatever you decide, I hope we can still hang out together.
Yeah, I'd really like to. I don't know why we never did this before. Too busy, I guess. Or maybe we weren't ready. Ready? People change. Situations change. Well, I'm ready now. I'm sorry it took so long. Sometimes I forget there are people who care. Ellen, you could stay over one night. I mean, if, if you wanted. <laughs> it doesn't have to be tonight, of course. Just, just if you feel like it. Maybe I could. Maybe I will. Sometime. This will work. <laughs> Are you sure? I promise. Please be safe, Damien. Of course I'll be safe. Would anyone like to have more wine? I think I'm good for right now. Uh, see? See, there it goes. deep in the woods, isn't there? Yeah. Thanks for coming out here with me. I know camping isn't really your thing. Well, I mean, not Evelyn's thing, but I don't know about you, Laura. Maybe a couple of times. When I was a kid. I thought maybe since we're in pretty deep on all the things we're working on right now, we could all use it. Because I used to, you know, when things got really bad, I'd come out into the woods and just be there. And it helped me. So I thought, you know, maybe it would help you too. I don't know if it'll inspire you or what, but if more people could experience something like this, you know, something with the same meaning it holds for me. It is nice. Honestly, I'm doing all right. Better than before, that's for sure. Time will there soon, but I'm not too worried. Well, Evelyn's got her dissertation to finish up. Oh, how's that going, Evelyn? Old Nora. Uh, I know, you know you're not supposed to ask how the dissertation is going. Is that a rule? Pour me that drink anytime. Can I see? <laughs> yes, 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 I'll have a drink. <sighs> I'm still kind of freezing, even with this fire going. <laughs> It's, it's delicious. You have never actually had mold wine like this before. No. In my family, we always had it around this time of year. You take red wine and add what? A cinnamon and orange? Yeah, those and cloves and um, anise, sour anise, and honey. That's it. Quite simple. It's really warming me up. And that's what it's for. <sighs> Ugh, so good. Evelyn, do those offer something? No, no, I'm awake. I was just looking at the fire. Kind of staring at it, I guess. What do you see? Everyone. People. Us. I don't know what that means. I think if we were going to make something to help people, it would be something that helped them see themselves. Something that reflected back on them somehow. Just a thought. It's probably nothing. No, no, I, I like that, though. Yeah, something to help you reflect. I think that's the right track. 
I'm really looking forward to working on these ideas with you two. And just as soon as all this nonsense with school is over. There's so many bad things happening in the world right now. But I, I don't know. Somehow, for some reason, I feel like the future is going to be okay. I don't know why. I just I have this feeling that we're the ones. We're, we're the ones who are going to fix it. Not we, like, you know, you or me, but I mean, like our generation. Hmm. Perhaps. I think we will. And the important thing, the important thing is to try. I feel like that's what we're meant to do. We're meant to try. Sometimes you get tired of trying. Well, at least I... I wonder what things will be like. achieved our goals, what would we say to each other, what would we say to our younger selves, the future we want, the future we're trying to create, did it even happen? Future selves, tell us if it happened, okay? Come back in time, just tell us that you made it happen, please. Damien, it's the wine, it's more than just the wine. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just interested in the future, that's all. My future, your future, humanity's future. Of course, right now, the only future I can picture is a headache I'm going to have to go on. No reason to worry about it now. You know what, you're right. I'll have some more. Of course. I think I'm passing out. Well, it is pretty late. Good night, Evelyn. All right, good night, Evelyn. Hey, I know you've been working hard, so have a good rest, okay? You deserve it. Okay, we're going to start with the basic waveforms. An analog oscillator can generate several different basic waveforms, and each has a different sound to it. That's a sine wave. That's a square wave. That's a sawtooth wave. And that is a triangle wave. Kind of similar to sine, isn't it? That's it. Those are the basic types. And, um, you make everything out of those? Uh, well, it gets more complicated quickly, but let's start with that. Okay. Now that you have an output wave, you want to change the pitch. That's easy, right? It's the frequency of the wave. And then you have the amplitude of the wave. To shape the sound to make it more like a note and less like a constant tone, we can put an envelope on it. Let me hook that up really quick. Uh -huh. uh, so, this module here is a standard ADSR envelope. ADSR? You're, you're going too fast. Attack, decay, sustain, release. Very simple. The simplest kind of envelope, really. <laughs> I need to, like, write all this down or something. No, no, no. You'll learn it in no time. Nora, you just went through, like, ten different concepts and I didn't get any of them. Here, let me just put an envelope on this. And a filter and a filter envelope. Nora, listen to this. See? It sounds like a musical instrument now. And all it is is an oscillator shaped by envelopes and filters and driven by a loop sequencer. Okay, but I don't know how you turn those beeps into that. You just need to start playing with it. But I don't know anything yet. Yes, you do. You know the basics. Just start playing around. Come on, Evelyn. Try to experiment, okay? Pretend you're like a child and just do things. Don't worry about expertise or sounding good or whatever. It's supposed to be fun. So have fun!
Thank you. Thank you for everything that led me to this place right here, this moment. Thank you.